<laughs> Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm Jake. I'm Jack. And we are the Boneheads, and we will be reviewing Sci-Fi Crimes by Chevelle today. Alright, I want to say that I've introduced Jake. I've introduced you to Chevelle through their third record, This Type of Thing Could Do Us In. And we have just forced you, Kevin, the one I'm pointing to, we just re- forced you to listen to this so we could review it. Now, overall thoughts on the albums, guys. Uh, first, I didn't think much of it, but once I listened to it a few times, I actually really enjoyed it. The music is really cool, and it's definitely got a lot more interesting take on metal than I've been used to with more modern metal bands, because most of them are really boring to me. But this one, they were really cryptic lyrics, really awesome melodies, and really awesome guitar hooks, and I just really liked it. Yeah, my first, the first Chevelle record I had heard was um, This Type of Thinking Could Do Us In, and then I heard Sci-Fi Crimes, which is like a completely different like style and sound compared to that and i liked it like way more compared to the two and like what i like about it is that you can't really classify it to a specific form of metal so like it's something that most people can't really do is to be stereotyped and chevelle pulls that off on sci-fi crimes now me being the chevelle fan here let me just give some background information they are chicago-based band this is their the album we are reviewing, this is their fifth studio album. I believe it was released in 2009? Yeah, I think that's right. Yes, 2009. The album Sci-Fi Crimes. Now, I really like this album. It was more experimental than other albums, but was so goddamn catchy. I think this album could be slightly responsible for giving them more mainstream credit, thanks to the song Letter from a Thief. I think that was the first single, or second. I don't know when Jars came out, but that song, catchy as fuck. Seriously. Yeah, like, we kind of all can agree that they're, like, a pretty underrated mainstream band that deserves way more credit as, like, a band who has style and something yeah. fresh compared to most, yeah. like, huge metal bands of yeah. today. And for something that I have to give them credit for for being a really big metal band is pulling off some really great, I'd say, sort of poppy melodies is they're able to do it in a non-cheesy way, which is a lot of metal bands today are doing. They have really cheesy melodies, but it sounds not very good. But they, since the guy is a really good singer, I think his name is Pete Lawford, right? Pete Lawford. He has a really good guitar sound and his vocals sound great. Yeah, Pete Lawford, amazing singer. Pretty good guitarist. I mean, she fucks up so much live. I've seen Chevelle twice. Who doesn't? Um, well, yeah, but here, I've seen Chevelle live twice. Okay, you know, fuck it. We'll, we'll talk about the album. Okay, let Letter from a Thief. What do you guys think of that track? It's a good track. Really you know. great guitar. The, not like you said, like, not like super hard. It uh, doesn't sound super hard. I probably wouldn't be able to play it, but got some good guitar sounds in it, and it's really catchy, and got some great cryptic lyrics. The fade into well, the guitar was actually really cool. Yeah, you know, now that you said that um, it doesn't sound too hard, it makes me think of the guitar tones. Now, the guitar tones on this album, or on this track, it doesn't sound like it, but they're low distortion. Chevelle plays in B-flat standard tuning, which is low as shit. It doesn't no. sound very heavy though, which is it's what I not. like. Yeah, yeah, like it's I just hate big. I hate like, just drop straight C. up, just like with the exception of bands like Slipknot, where it's like just the straight up heavy turn the knob yeah. all the way up distortion. I really hate that, with the exception of a few bands. I like that Chevelle doesn't do that. I love on this track, you know. So the verse, the verse is really just kind of mellow, like really mysterious. And they bust in with this huge chorus, so melodic, some harmonies in there, some. Double tracked guitars sounds beautiful. Like I'm a sucker for melodies and harmonies. Those are like uh, my favorite things. Music uh, doesn't matter what jo- genre it is. If it has a really good melody, I'll love it. Something I really love that bands do is like when they make a song that stands out on the record. And for me, that would be Shameful Metaphors. That song completely stood out against every other song, which made it my favorite song, probably overall, and any Savelle song I've ever heard. That song is it's kind of a tearjerker, you know. Like, it's really emotional. I have no idea what that song's about. And it screws with your head, too. Because you have to think about it. It's a song that makes you think. Yeah, but Definitely. it starts out with just, like, that beautiful, clean, clean guitar. 
It's got that weird bass tone comes in, and it's really it's really mysterious, atmospheric. It's really yeah. a great piece. Speaking of bass, they're like the bass lines from Chevelle. The bassist Dean Bernardini is his name. Yeah, well, because <laughs> they haven't they haven't always had the same bassist. No, they had. Um, Did they have their brother? They had Joe Loeffler, who was their brother, and he was in the band up until the album Benacera, their fourth studio album. Um, he How awkward quit. would that be to quit? Uh, have your brother quit no, and just go to a Christmas party? Bro, hey, guy, bro. how you doing? Wasn't that like never disclosed if that he was, quit yeah, or if he was kicked no one out? Knows. But here's the thing. Dean Bernardini is their, is their brother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a family band thing. Yeah, it's... <laughs> that basically means like whenever you, you fight, in some bands if you fight, you're like pissed off each other. But if you're in a family and you're a band, you're like... Come here, bro. I'm, I love you, man. I imagine they fight more than most bands, but I bet you they've just kind of. Uh, Pete is a They dick. probably get, Pete is a <laughs> They dick probably to grit Sam. their teeth and go through it. Pete's, go through Pete with can it. Kind of be a, yeah, Pete I, is weird. Pete, uh, family though is like I think that's the one group of people on this. Not to get sentimental or any shit, but no matter how much you fight with them, you, deep down you always kind of feel like a certain kind of camaraderie with them. Yeah, sci-fi crimes. Family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The right album, away, we man. bring the family together. The boneheads. <laughs> <laughs> Another right. song I really want to touch on really, really quick was the song um, uh, Mexican Sun, oh, which yeah. I thought that was a really great song. That's kind of a deep cut, too. Like, if you would talk to somebody like, oh, I know Chevelle, they probably just know the singles. Mexican Sun's not a single. It's just a really nice piece. Really heavy. And you know what? Let's talk about, let's talk about the song. The least powerful song on the, the album. The disappointment. The of one the that's not very good. They could have touched the shoe it song. Up. Fell into your shoes. <laughs> the shoe song. <laughs> the shoe song. <laughs> Can't tie my shoes song, the same way again ever that now. That song's kind of boring. It does like, get boring. It's felt like something you've heard before. That's the song where you could like stereotype Chevelle. I've. If that song comes on my iPod, skip. <laughs> I, I, I took it off. <laughs> oh, really? It got, got to the point I just deleted that far. it. Yeah. yeah, that song, it's but, got kind of a cool chorus. I like it for the chorus, but the verse is boring. There's nothing but, really special to it. it it's just like, there. It seems like one of those songs where you hear a song like, I don't really want to listen to the whole song. Skip to the part you like. Once you hear the part you like, skip the next song. It's the troublemaker of sci-fi crimes. But I'm not... <laughs> but I'm not like, Self-referencing. I'm not like that kind of person where like I hear a song I really don't no, like from a band and I decide like I don't like it like the band themselves like a lot of people do that where they hear a song and they're like I don't like this band anymore they're doing things I don't like no I heard that song and said wow this song is kind of bad in my opinion and then I listened to like the rest of the record and I was like well okay one song out of like what 11 12 you know what? this record it's got its highs it's got its lows it's got its heavies it's got its softs it's even got the nice acoustic Highlands apparitions. Just His voice is, he, he's so you can tell he's straining in that song, but it sounds yeah. good still. Uh, he he does sound like he's straining his voice a lot. But like it yeah. classifies him. You can't yeah. like compare him to somebody else. Yeah, it actually, him uh, him. I'd like to classify on the tone that I'd like to say something that I noticed compared to a lot of new metal bands. A lot of new metal bands they sound very polished, very rehearsed and survey, but they sounds like instead of going into the studio and having like the studio do everything for them. It sounds just like three guys playing in a room to me, without it sounding like shit. They are the studio. Well, and they know like their guitar stuff too. Like yeah. I'm gonna reference a different record, but like the song um, "Get Some." Yeah. Like they're like you couldn't do that. The <laughs> studio that can't do that. For, it's it's cool. Listen to it. It's got the coolest like harmonic intro. But like you can't do that at the studio. You have to know how to do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like they're pretty much prepared. Like. They have, like, a self-awareness of music that they can, like... They probably screwed that up and said, that sounds cool, let's keep it in there. Yeah, happy you know? accident. Yeah. Chevelle, for me, they've really made a mark on my music taste. I wish they were more popular. They are such a fantastic band. Let's just wrap this up real quick. Ten out of... Whoa. whoa, <laughs> whoa. One through ten. What's One your through rating? ten. What's your rating, Kevin? We know Jack's rating. Well, since I haven't really listened to it, and I think I still need to set it in, I really liked it, I'll give it a seven. We prepared. <laughs> seven and a half. And uh, I think it will probably grow a lot more if when I listen to it more and it grows on me more. I give it a nine. It's like my favorite Chevelle record. You know, compared to the other ones, I don't like it as much. But non-comparative to the other ones, 
It's fantastic. I love it. You should pick it up, you, the viewer, the I wouldn't, listener. I wouldn't buy it as your first Chevelle record. No, no. Do not get it as your not. first. If you want a first, this type of thinking could do us in is a great one at the start. Even Hats Off to the Bull would be a good start. It's a great one. So I, give I, it, I don't recommend ever buying the latest record of yeah, the band. I give it a 9 out of 10. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to do something real quick. <laughs> If you if you just if you're just here for the review and don't want to listen to us talk for another minute, leave now. But I want to share a story about Chevelle. So I met these fuckers. <laughs> I met them. I shook their hands. I got an autograph, and I'm ta- I go over and Dean, the bassist, signs my paper. He just looks at me and smiles and kind of looks over me and like kind of weird. Then I walk up to Pete and he's like. We're gonna get chocolate wasted. Then I walk up to Sam. He's the nicest fucking guy. Like he's like, oh man, my giving hand's getting tired. And I just say, you know what? If you can't drum tonight, <laughs> I know all of Venezuela. And he just laughs at me. <laughs> and they were all kind of assholes, but I love them so much. Put on a great ass show. The beauty of stardom. Yeah. Okay, that was just my little bullshit story. Thank you all for watching. I hope you're listening. Fuck you.